Lighting science has evolved a lot over the years. Almost three years ago, I released the first episode of Plants and Light, and back then, broad spectrum LEDs were gaining some popularity. But now they're pretty much the standard for indoor sole source LED lighting. Most of the original LED grow lights used blue and red LEDs, which totally makes sense because plants primarily use blue and red to power photosynthesis. And blue and red LEDs are very energy efficient, meaning they generate a lot of photons of light with the power they're provided and generate minimal heat. Even with this higher energy efficiency of blue-red, the industry is still moving more and more towards broad spectrum LEDs. And there's a lot of reasons for this, but for me, I am usually picking broad spectrum LEDs because they're just a lot easier to grow under. While it's definitely possible to grow some amazing indoor crops under blue-red LEDs, I've personally found it difficult to grow a wide range of crops without seeing crop or variety specific reactions to the narrow spectrum. Some crops like tomatoes and arugula I've found can be especially sensitive to narrow spectrum. And there's a lot of research out there showing physiological disorders in tomatoes and cucumbers and other flowering crops when grown in narrow spectrum conditions. Narrow spectrum lights make a lot of sense in a greenhouse when you have sunlight to provide most of the light and the LEDs are just a supplement. And in niche situations indoors, narrow spectrum lights still have a lot of application. But in general applications, I prefer the flexibility of a broad spectrum. It just is, it's more gentle on the crop. And in my experience, I've found it's possible to grow a you know, beautiful, healthy crop, even in less than ideal environments, when using a broad spectrum LED. A unique crop response I see under blue-red LEDs is the uh, suntan leaf. This is usually seen in butterhead lettuce or um, any red leaf lettuce where the first layer of leaves is pretty much absorbing all of the light. These leaves are really efficient at absorbing red and blue. So the lower layer is you know, starved for light pretty much. And you'll actually see a clear line in the leaf where the lower canopy is really light colored and the parts receiving light directly are dark. This may seem like a small like aesthetic detail, but it's actually an illustration of what's happening to a, a larger crop. So let's say we have a tomato plant under narrow spectrum. Most of the light is gonna be absorbed by that top layer of leaves, and not much is gonna be reaching that deeper canopy to power photosynthesis on the lower leaves. A broad spectrum grow light provides some green light. And while green is less efficient at powering photosynthesis, it is able to penetrate into the canopy to provide some energy to the lower leaves to improve the quality throughout the crop and not just on the top. Throughout the crop and not the top, or not just the top. So, white LEDs, a little less efficient, but less funky growth responses and better lower canopy growth. What else? Well, I really love working in my greenhouse. Sunlight, it makes me happy. And working under broad spectrum LEDs, also makes me happy. And while I like growing plants pretty much anywhere, it can be difficult to spend a long time in a purple grow room. It just doesn't make me very happy. Another part of grower happiness is money. Making it and not spending too much of it. While a broad spectrum grow light is less energy efficient and potentially a little bit more expensive to operate, what most growers find to be more impactful is the cost of the grow lights themselves. Blue-red diodes are not as common as white diodes. White diodes are mass produced and used in just about everything. That mass production, huge scale production of white diodes significantly drops the cost of white diodes. And with diodes being one of the most expensive components in a grow light, using a lower priced white diode makes the grow light less expensive to produce, which can make it more affordable to the growers. 
The decision between broad and narrow spectrum is definitely a situation specific decision. And in a situation like I have here, I really like the broad spectrum option. This is my new garage grow room, my garage. And my goal in here is to grow a wide range of crops under variable light intensities and collect yield data, which I plan on sharing in future books and videos. And to achieve this goal, I needed a really flexible grow light. And it doesn't get more flexible than the Phantom Fino. Like the original Plants and Light series, this video was made possible with support from Hydrofarm. They were super nice and sent me some of the new Phantom Fino 440 LED grow lights along with the PX2 controller so I could set up this new grow room. Uh, and it's, it's really fun. With this setup, I can hit light intensity is anywhere from 200 to 700 micromoles per meter square per second or PPFD, enabling me to grow everything from microgreens to trees. These fixtures have red diodes mixed in with light diodes to improve the overall energy efficiency and help broaden the spectrum, which further helps me grow a broad range of crops. And this setup is super flexible. I can do just about everything with it. Super thankful. Thanks, Hydro Farm. And these lights are low profile, enabling me to pack in two layers of growing in this just sort of low ceiling height garage, uh, which is pretty cool. I can way overdo my salad needs. And once I can bum some free electrical service from my electrician friend, I'm planning on switching this grow room from 120 to 240 volts. And because these lights can run on pretty much everything from 120 to 277, it's a really easy switch. Um, so yeah, that will be nice. Right, Lenny? Once you give me free electrical service. To learn more about the Phantom Finos, check out phantombio.com and hydrofarm.com. To see some more crop growth under these lights, check out my Instagram. If you enjoy this, please like, comment, um, you know, let me know what other growing topics you'd like me to cover because the more you know, the better you grow. Backstreet Boy move. I'm so happy.